Hello and welcome to another video. Um, I was on a little bit of an Easter break to the East Coast and I visited the Radar Museum at Bodsey in Suffolk. Uh, after a quick museum tour, I um, took a venture into the woods um, and discovered that the buried reserve um, is accessible. So, uh, during the, at the start of the Second World War, um, Britain realised that its Air Force couldn't compete um, and outnumber the uh, German Air Force, especially without some sort of early, uh, early warning. So, they, they developed Chain Home, uh, our first uh, interlocking radar system covering primarily the east coast. Uh, there was also a risk of, of air attack, and um, the first thing in most conflicts the adversary wants to do is take out your air defences. So as a counter to that, um, if detecting the aircraft didn't work, if sending up fighters to intercept them didn't work, uh, we, we were able to protect uh, some of our radar stations. And almost exclusive to the east coast in England was the buried reserve. So in here is a replica um, of equipment that would normally be above ground. Uh, I believe this one is the transmitter block. Uh, so in here would have been a radar transmitter. Distinguished by uh, at the entrance, so we have a, um, a, a, a double cover entrance over there and that was for getting equipment in and out. Those two concrete and steel panels would have slid back and equipment could have been winched or craned down. The one here then was for personnel. We can see a handrail here. Uh, this was just for locking it uh, when it wasn't in use. And then we have about three storeys worth of cast iron and steel steps getting down into the bunker. So you'll be thankful, or I'm certainly thankful, that isn't the way we're going to get into this bunker today. Um, the escape hatch at the other end of the bunker um, is open. The, the, the steel or steel and concrete cap um, is missing. The ladder, while loose, um, is reasonably reasonably secure. Um, I didn't open this, I didn't bring these ratchet straps. Um, I did fix it to a tree. Um, it was just holding on to the chain link fence, which wasn't really wasn't really strong enough. Um, so we have the, the emergency exit and then we have the main entrance above. So let me first of all uh, get down into the bunker itself. Um, so while I'm doing this, this absolutely is done at your own risk. So just because me and, and potentially lots of other people in the past have done it doesn't mean um, it is in any way uh, safe and we can't, we can't condone it. Um, so you take matters into your own hands. So here we are into the emergency exit of the buried reserve. So we're not, we're not quite in uh, to the bunker itself. We've still got about another story um, of uh, steel ladders to go down, but we have the emergency exit door, uh, two steel uh, lever handles here, and also in the middle we have um, a little a little air release. Uh, the 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 reserves when the air filtration was running were, would run at a positive pressure, so these valves and all the doors. Uh, if you didn't have this, the pressure inside the bunker would be too great, and you, it'd be physically impossible to open the doors. Uh, so these valves, I think, just allow that that pressure to equalize. So let me try and swing around now and get down into the bunker. And here we are inside the, the buried reserve. There are just four rooms, this one being the main room, this is the main equipment uh, or transmitter room. Uh, there was also uh, possibly a little toilet room in there that would have held just a uh, probably an LSAN chemical toilet. Then there's the main entranceway with the metal staircase, and then we have the plant room or the air filtration room uh, just behind this wall. So the bunker's in, in reasonably, reasonably good, good condition, um, given that it is, it is 80 years old now. Um, and if it has been open, it's you know, is, is liable to, to have been vandalized uh, and abused. Some camping equipment, camping gear people have come down. Uh, looking at the construction, this, this probably would have been a, a, a cut and cover, so they'd have dug a big hole, um, filled it, 
uh, with it looks like so the so the brick and, and uh, render here so it looks like they would most likely just like they did with pillboxes and other reinforced concrete uh, structures put the bricks down they have filled it with reinforcing and concrete and let it set and while that's setting behind the the shuttering of the concrete you can, you can get on with with fitting out and working uh, inside yeah so here we have the the emergency escape door uh, and this this large galvanized tin um, extraction hood so this would have sat above the transmitter equipment so it looks like just up up in that corner we have some some power cables coming in uh, it would have been power would have been generated off-site as in off outside this bunker uh, and piped in uh, and then we have these um, these air outtakes essentially uh, so the air coming in here would have been filtered uh, so this this would have allowed the air to um, to flow and if you if you sort of remember or if you noticed above the uh, on top of the bunker on the ground now uh, those those ventilation shafts were actually quite a way off so that would have been connected by pipes yeah into this this small room yeah not not quite sure as i say what it is possibly would have housed a housed a chemical toilet in fact that that may have have been was likely to have been a toilet roll holder uh, but no no plumbing or water obviously so it would have been a tin bucket um, they may have had water for washing hands uh, and washing up they they would only essentially have been down here as long as the the air rate of the threat existed um, or in the case of invasion, they may have they may have spent spent much longer down here until uh, until the, yeah until they no longer needed to. Uh, big doors, double doors for getting the equipment in and out. Uh, if we if we come into the hallway here, I look up at the ceiling. We can see the double hatches for getting equipment in and the single hatch uh, the stairs for personnel. And finally then our, our fourth little room is the, the plant room. And this is uh, air, air filtration, uh, air filters here. Um, so sitting around the edges would, would likely have been uh, ducting for, for pipe work. Uh, the air was most likely drawn in uh, from these two vents here from outside. Uh, and then, then pushed out into the, the main transmitter room uh, using these, these two square um, square ducts at the top. So we can we can have a look inside the uh, looks like horsehair filtration mats in there. Um, I don't think I don't think there was any sort of uh, chemical or biological filtration. I think it was just uh, just filtering the air against smoke and dust and so on. So yeah, that's it. Rather, rather interesting, I hope. Uh, let's go and, go and have a look upstairs at some of the surface remains. Incredible how quiet it is down there. No signs at all, but I suppose it's well, 12, 20 feet below. Um, obviously, probably just with a with a six foot roof, nothing, nothing too thick. Yeah, yeah. That was the the buried reserve of Bodsey Chain Home in Suffolk on the east coast of England. We have a look over here. Here we can see some of the. Uh, the vents and the air, the air ventilation shafts. No caps, but certainly with the with the wooden louvers on top. Um, not quite sure what this this structure would have been. Um, certainly, lots of wooden beams going across for the floor, um, reinforced by the by the concrete. Uh, this would would have held a wooden beam with either, with, you know, with either a, um, a metallic, such as a, a small distant hut, or a, a 
a wooden, uh, some sort of, of temporary type structure. And yeah, the big concrete bases in the bottom are the uh, the bases for some of those um, 500 foot uh, chain home transmit masts. And I think the receives were something like 328 feet high. Um, so, so huge, huge radio, uh, radio masts with a lattice work of um, of copper and steel between them as the transmitting elements. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, please subscribe to the channel, um, give the video a thumbs up. Um, I'm not I'm not doing it for the likes. I'm just I'm doing it to share share my passion and my interest. But yeah, but every every little helps. Thanks very much, and see you in the next video.